Hey guys, it's Marie Antoinette with Posh Paper Perfection and welcome to my channel. Hopefully you guys, yes, you guys can hear me now. All right. <laughs> okay. Hey guys. Um, it's Marie Antoinette. I actually was not planning on coming uh, on live and uh, I decided, you know what? I am going to go ahead and, and share with you uh, one of my projects that I have completed for um, uh, Spellbinders. Hello, Dunya. Can you hear me okay? Um, sometimes my microphone switches um, uh, the inputs. I have a Yeti, but it's being temperamental. I think there's something wrong with the HDMI cable or something. But um, thank you so much for letting me know that you can hear me. I have missed you guys. It has been a crazy week. And um, I don't know if anybody... Uh, read uh, my description in my last video, which was the Happy Harvest Haunting uh, card that uh, Jeff and I went uh, to get our second COVID shot on Friday and was again knocked down for the whole weekend. <laughs> Oh my goodness, uh, we end up getting the Moderna shot and um, we had COVID back in uh, January and apparently that uh, vaccine for people who had COVID is just brutal. So I want to say that that's not true, but you know, with him and I both experiencing, you know, tired and, and not feeling that great and um, luckily we didn't have the really bad symptoms, but we are feeling much better now. Um, also another thing that has changed that's kind of thrown me for a loop is my employer decided to change my hours. So I am getting up really, really early, <laughs> which means I need to go to bed early also, which kind of throws a loop for my projects. But anyway, um, enough about me. I want to share with you guys um, my very first project because these dies here, you're looking at the um, hybrid T rose, okay? And uh, uh, it is the hybrid T rose and teapot by Susan Tierney Cockburn. Um, they are now available. And Spellbinders was so gracious enough to send me four of the five new flower dies. So I am super excited. The next one that I'm working on is the geranium um, and the bucket, um, which I've already completed the bucket, but I'm not going to share, share with you that yet. Um, so anyway, um, so when I made... Or I should say, anytime that I make um, a project, it seems like I. It's a little bit of a challenge because you're 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 the first to get something, and you don't really have many other projects to look at to get inspiration. So really, it's truly like a blank canvas, and so um, 
I'm going to share with you what I made, okay, because first I was going to make it as a card, and um, I decided, no, I don't want to make it as a card. It, uh, I want to make something for uh, my boyfriend, Jeff. So this is what I made. Um, this is a, you know, a wall art mixed media project that anybody can do. Anybody can do this, okay? And on my blog, I am going to be uh, releasing all of the steps that I did. Because my computer was acting up and telling me that it was completely full and I couldn't make videos um, with my, um, my Logitech, I had to do it all by my phone and I haven't yet um, edited those videos. So I wanted to come on and, you know, answer any questions that you guys may have about this, this uh, tea set. Uh, stopping myself. <laughs> oh, okay. Very cool. Very cool. That's awesome. Um, so... Uh, let's see. Jenya says that she's going to be saving it uh, for a trip overseas, which I am envious of. I would love to do a trip overseas. So, um, here is the project and I just want to walk you through, uh, the inspiration for this. Okay. So, um, this project was specifically made for my boyfriend. Um, thus the... Uh, Douglas Adam quote, uh, a cup of tea uh, would restore my normality, <laughs> which if you guys know that quote, it's from the uh, uh, Hitchhiker's uh, uh, Guide, uh, uh, now, now I can't even think of what it's from, um, but anyway, um, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Sorry, I like drew a blank there. Uh, and he has been having me watch this BBC uh, comedy. Uh, it, for, at first it was a radio show and then it turned into a BBC co comedy. And so anyway, the whole story behind this is that my boyfriend was a avid coffee drinker. He is still a avid coffee drinker and I wasn't feeling that well and I said hey do you think we could have some tea in the house and he had tea like Lipton tea but I wanted a really like specialty tea and so he looked at me perplexed like isn't tea the same as like the tea that my mom makes no because her tea is golden <laughs> she makes the good old southern hospitality tea. I'm still trying to perfect her tea. Um, but, uh, I said, no, no, um, there's all kinds of different teas, sweetheart. Um, he said, okay, well, let's go to Wegmans, which is a grocery store. So we went to Wegmans and ugh, I had no idea what a huge tea section they had. And so anyway, he saw, all the teas and he just all of a sudden just became kind of overwhelmed and started looking at all of the teas and going, Ooh, this sounds really interesting. Ooh, this sounds interesting. So anyway, uh, we get home and I fix myself a cup and I ask him, do you want, want some tea? He looks at me and he's just like, Oh no. Yeah. Tea. That's like, that's like a girly thing. <laughs> And I was like, no, I, you might like it. And he says, okay, yeah, sure. So he tries the tea and he absolutely loves it. Next week when we go, uh, when he went uh, grocery shopping, I have to say when he went grocery shopping, um, uh, he came back with eight more boxes of tea <laughs> and different tea. So he is like, had, ever since then, he has had a tea a day. Uh, and he knows all about the benefits of tea and yeah, he's, he's really obsessed about tea. So, uh, when I saw this teapot, I thought of him and I was like, oh yes. 
Um, to save time, I didn't really want to color roses. And if you've watched Susan's um, uh, video tutorials, you know that that's what she does. She, uh, you know, colors the roses. So, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I looked online for um, flower inspiration, which I always do. Um, yeah, here we go. Am I still live? Okay. I, I didn't know if I was still live or not. Um, uh, I always go online and for inspiration and I noticed these white beautiful roses. So I said, oh, you know what? Um, I really like those. What are what kind of roses are those? That these happen to be made to look like Kennedy roses. And let me see if I still have the pick of that. I may still have the pick. Um, I mean, yeah. So this is what the Kennedy Rose was. And my inspiration whenever I do um, flowers is I, I research what flower I want to do. Then I pick out my colors to match um, that flower. So the Copic markers will match that flower. And this one... At first, I made a totally white rose. Okay, this is a totally, well, it's not totally white rose anymore because I colored it. Um, but it was totally white, and that was my first one, and I was like, ugh, that's not good. So I took a step back, and I said, I need to watch Susan's video tutorial again, how to shape these roses. Because I own a lot of uh, rose dyes, and I cannot tell you how many rose dyes I have that I just couldn't get it. I really couldn't get it. So, um, so anyway, I tried again, and I really um, took my time in making these. Um, a couple of things that I do that's a little bit different than Susan, and I am grabbing uh, some... Uh, I'm trying to think where, where is it? I mean, it was right here. <laughs> well, I was going to show you, and now I'm not sure exactly what happened to it. Um, but, uh, a lot of Susan's, I'll try, try to show you on here with this one. Oh, hello. So, a lot of the technique has to do with using your reverse tweezers, okay? So when you're using your reverse tweezers um, and you're grabbing these areas here to, to turn them, if you turn them down, then that works, okay? Um, but also, what I found was I was taking the petals from the side and then rolling it like as if I was rolling for a uh, rosebud, okay? I would roll them like that and then do this flipping of this right here, what this is showing flipping it back with my reverse tweezers. By doing that, the paper really became flexible and moldable to what I wanted, okay? Uh, this flower right here was made with just the, um, the uh, smaller, smaller die so you have a big die here that she says to cut out three times and then the smaller um, uh, petal die. This one was made with three small petal dies and 12 of the um, 
single petals. Okay. And then, of course, um, um, this right here, which is the, um, uh, the inside, whatever, whatever that's called. I, I can't keep a, um, a, a plant alive to save my life. <laughs> so I'm not going to fake and tell you what the uh, part of a plant is. All I can tell you is I can make them into, uh, from papers. But that's what I use for this one. Now, I happen to love the way that this looks. And what I end up doing was the three um, smaller uh, petals, they are stacked one, two, three, um, you know, uh, uh, opposite, opposite from each other. So um, I really wish I, I could find those guys so I can show you guys. But, you know, one would be uh, this way, and then you would offset it, and then you would offset it on top of that, okay? So that's how that was made, okay? Um, this uh, um, bud is actually with, um, again, let me do it this way so you can see, okay? So the bud is made with the, um, the inside, okay, um, uh, with this, this die right here, uh, my thumb is at, okay, and then the smaller three pet petal, okay, so basically you cut out the three petal and then you glue the bud on that, okay? Then you take some of the smaller petals here, okay? Let me do this this way. You take the smaller petals and I put them inside here, you know, and, and glued it that way. Once I glued it where I felt like it was getting full, then I started kind of squeezing it together to shape it where it actually looked like the bud. And um, so anyway, like I said, I have some video um, on my phone of me doing that. But if you guys would like to see how I did that, um, please let me know. You may also notice with this, um, the Ham Hamlico white paper, that there's a hint of like a, a peach in it. Now, it was really hard for me to find a Copic marker that I had um, uh, on, you know, in, in my, in my uh, arsenal of uh, tools. But um, when I looked at all of my markers, I noticed that uh, this one right here, uh, the E000, which is called Pale Fruit, okay, Pale Fruit Pink. This actually looked really beautiful with stark white paper. I'm telling you, this is the whitest paper that, that I probably can get, okay? There are other whites that are not as, you know, uh, bright as this. Um, and this happened, you wouldn't even know. You wouldn't even know that it's in there. It kind of just looks like it's um, naturally like that. But this is what uh, gives it the natural glow. Okay. Um, and all I did with that was um, show you on here because unfortunately, I, like I said, I can't find my, my um, extra pieces. But, you know, basically what I did there was I would color the insides just like Susan has in her videos, okay? And then when it came to, um, this is the bottom part of the bud. This is the top part of the bud. So top, top part of the bud right here, okay? And the bottom, you put glue and, you know, just insert there. I would take this uh, marker 
and just color just the bottom. And I would do that to the front and the back, okay? The other thing I did with the bud was I cut out um, four of, I, I think it's called the calyx, maybe not, I don't know. We'll call it the stem. I'm not really sure what it's called, but um, four of these. So uh, two getting glued together, and I don't know if you can see it in here because it's pretty hard to see, but I didn't like just having um, one glued on top of the other and then just glued in the front. I glued it in the front and the back and then connected the stems, okay? Uh, and that's why that looks so realistic, right? The, um, the other Copic marker that I used was um, this one here. This is, what is this? Oh, <laughs> YG25. This is like one of my very favorite ones, okay? This is called, uh, I think that's called Celadon Green. And then that's what I use for um, the leaves, okay? To get the dew of the rain, okay, this is Nuvo Crystal Drops. And I love this. I think every paper gardener should have this in their arsenal because it just makes such a beautiful statement on your pieces, okay? I did do some embossing um, for this. Uh, so the embossing was done with uh, Ranger's uh, embossing powder, the copper tinsel, okay? And I did that with a, um, uh, a Ranger uh, ink and let me think. Let me see if I can ink marker. And I don't know if everyone has seen these before, but you know, basically, this is where the embossed area was. Um, and I drew. Oh, hello. Let's see if I can get it out. I drew with the um the embossing uh pen. And then I sprinkled the uh, embossing powder on there and then took my heat gun and, and heated it up, okay? So that's how I did that. This teacup is, believe it or not, it is seven layers, seven layers of paper. Um, it is so thick. I don't know if you can see how thick it is, okay? That's seven layers, very, very thick. And I, you know, when I did that seven layers and then I was getting ready to attach it, I kind of thought to myself, you know, this would be really cute. I don't have any grandchildren, but if I had a grandchild, uh, like, a, um, you know, and I wanted to uh, create a, um, a, a kind of like a, a, a tea set for them, you know, I could basically make a cardboard tea, uh, tea kettle, uh, for them to play with. It, you know, it it's just uh, an idea. The um, paper. Let's talk about the paper because a lot of people have commented on the paper and saying I love that tea kettle and that paper. Um, the paper that I used is called Copper Blues. And it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I mean, uh, this is like one of my go-to um, papers. These are all the designs that you get um, in this paper stack. And you can find this on Amazon. Isn't this gorgeous? This is so gorgeous. Okay. But this is what I made, the um, tea kettle and the plate. All right. Let's talk about the plate. So the plate is just, um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. The plate, 
I use the Nest Abilities Essential Circle Etch Dies. Okay, and um, this was the largest die, the largest circle die, and then this is the second um, uh, uh, largest uh, die. Okay, um, so what I how I made the um, quote is basically I took guess what kind of paper <laughs> crystal <laughs> because I use crystal white for everything and that's by uh, cardstock warehouse um, I took this and um, basically fed it through my printer and printed this quote okay went ahead and you know designed it up in word um, and if you guys don't know how to do that, let me know, and I'll be happy to show you guys how I design um, uh, quotes in Word, and I can also can design them in Canva. If you guys never heard of Canva, you can do that for absolutely free with that program. And so, anyway, I put it through my printer, um, printed it, and then I die cut. Um, uh, it with that uh, essential circle etch dies. Okay, um, this is two, uh, two circle, two little circles, uh, stacked on top of each other. It wasn't purposely supposed to be like that. I kind of messed up and forgot to print off my um, my quote. And then had to put, uh, instead of, you know, trying to stamp something or something like that, I decided to go ahead and try it again and just, you know, glue on top. The bottom of the um, plate, you'll notice that this, um, I don't know if you can tell, there you go, when I shine like this, that is actually foiled. So I used my Hot Glimmer Foil Machine by Spellbinders, and um, I used the Essential Duo Lines Glimmer Circles. Uh, I took two of the Glimmer Circles, uh, connected them with um, a washi tape, and uh, you know put it on my circle, uh, flipped it up, Put the copper uh, foil on on the blue, okay. With the it, it's the pretty side up, okay. Put the um, the dies back down, and then flip the paper and a hot foil that. So that's how I got that. Um, that paper I had to create that image so it would look like a plate, okay. And then finally, the canvas. The canvas is just a white canvas that I uh, took. Um, I really didn't know what I was doing, um, but I actually really like this color. I think that if I had it on white, it would take away from um, the quote and from the roses. Um, this was acrylic paint in copper, white, and I think an off-white and I just mix them together and I end up getting this color but anybody can do this um, this was uh, glued with super super uh, sorry turbos tacky glue okay and um, and like I said you know I use seven layers of this because I didn't want to use any foam adhesive at all. There's no foam adhesive in this project. Gasp. <laughs> Gasp. Because you guys know how much I love uh, foam adhesive. So anyway, that is my project. And um, the next project that I will be doing, uh, grab this is uh, the geranium, which I'm really super excited about. And huh, the bucket. So make sure you guys are 
you know, um, clicking on that bell to see my, my projects. I'm hoping that my computer is not going to tell me that my disk is full and not allow me to uh, take any um, film because that was very frustrating this weekend. Um, and I can actually show you guys um, the step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial. When I upload the, uh, the steps that I did for the uh, hybrid T-Rows, I'll let you guys know, okay? You can see right now um, the tea, how big is the teapot and the barrel? Well, let's see. Uh, let me grab a, I want to say it's at least four inches. You definitely can, um, the frame is a six by six. Okay. <laughs> so if you're going to do the, if you're going to do this card and I have a couple of frames, uh, da, 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 da. let's see here. It's, uh, it's at least five, it looks like almost five and a half inches wide. Yeah, five and a half inches wide. And do, 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 do. three and almost, almost three and a quarter, uh, a little bit more than that. Um, tall. Okay. So if you're going to try to make this on an A2 card, you you really need to have this on a bigger card, okay? Either a uh, five and a half by five and a half card, I think would be okay. And I have a five and a half by five and a half somewhere around here. So this is a, I think this is a five and a half by five and a half. Let's look at this. It's a little bit more than five and a half. Yeah. So I think this is a five and, uh, what's it, five and five eighths. So you can see how from front, oops, sorry, from, um, from one side to the other, how big this card is. Okay. But you still have room to do roses. I mean, let's see. This is a rose. See? You would still have room for it, but maybe you would put the sentiment, like, on the teapot. All right. Uh, for a slimline, mm, mm, I don't think so. I'm just uh, grabbing some random bases that I have so you guys can get some idea. So this one, this card is a oh, it's a seven, a five by seven. So you can see with the five by seven, it actually hangs off. But if you have it, um, uh with the width uh, long ways, I guess, I don't know what you call this, but if you have it this way, then you have plenty of room to put some flowers on top, but still it's like, you know, you won't really be able to build up your flowers bigger, okay? So that's why I say, you know, with a square card, it's pretty much better to do it like that with that. Um, if you wanted to do a mixed media project and didn't want to go with um, a 6x6, six six, you could always do an 8x8, eight eight, okay? So this is an 8x8, eight eight, and if you guys see the rest of my um, uh, <laughs> 
of this. Uh, don't be scared. I just, uh, okay, let me do this and see if I can get this to look a little bit not close up. Hello. See my mess. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Yes, that's what it really looks like. Okay, so this is a, mm -hmm. this is an 8x8. Eight eight, and so to put it on an 8x8, eight eight, you put it there. Oh, yes. You could build this up and make it look like oh fancy and yeah you could do so much on an eight by eight um but you know definitely you want to have this on a a bigger card or going uh uh the what is it the long side going wide <laughs> whatever you call that i don't know what you call that if you guys know exactly what that's called let me know because i don't know what it's called oh but anyway um did you have any other questions this is the bucket i've already made my bucket and i'll be sharing with you guys how i made that bucket uh once i have my geraniums made i cannot wait to make my geraniums uh, and I'm hoping to make a background with the Simon Hurley, um, six by six stencil. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I've never used one of these. Horizontal? Horizontal? <laughs> yeah, definitely horizontal, not vertical. Thank you. I really appreciate, appreciate you helping me out with that. So anyway, um, uh, like I said, um, uh, this is the first of uh, five flower dies that, that I have um, out of the six that have been released. And, and actually, I'll have a total of 12 projects to share with you guys all the way up into October 20th and then um, on October 21st you guys are gonna really really love those projects um, what they have coming out is amazing amazing if you love words and you love making cards with words that's all I'm gonna to say say I'm not gonna give away what it is but if you love making cards with words, you're going to absolutely love um, their, their releases. And also, um, Susan's new die um, that are coming out for the spring. So anyway, well, I would love to, you know, continue talking. But unfortunately, like I said in the beginning, my employer has changed my work hour, so I need to go to sleep. <laughs> but it was wonderful talking with you guys. Thank you so much for caring and, um, you know, just, you know, uh, saying a little prayer for me while, you know, Jeff and I recovered. We are perfectly fine. And, uh, and I am looking forward to sharing with you more of these uh, videos. Uh, I'm so sorry that I haven't been able to have them out um, like I usually do, but um, hopefully uh, this weekend normalcy will happen and I can start shooting um, and editing um, a lot of the videos. So thank you so much. See you guys later. Bye.